it's like my goodness it's better for the customer to cancel hey my little newsies i am here to do this first video of my uber life this is my story times that i'm adding to my channel they're going to be short story times but there are story times of me while i'm ubering or stories that i may hear so my first story i have many i think i'm gonna go with the one that just happened uh, just a little while ago so i get um requests and I go over to this house and this was about seven o'clock tonight so I get over to the house and so I'm like I know I'm at the right address because um, the address wasn't very clear on the on the uh, curb but I figured it out I can kind of tell because I don't think it was any number on the house at least I didn't see so th there was no porch light on or no uh, front door light on so I noticed there was a light on in the kitchen so I put on my hazard light and I contact the person and says I'm here and then um, I didn't call because uber will let the person know that I'm there but I always uh, when I, once I get there I always uh, text or either I'll call just to let them know that I'm there and make sure I have the right address so I'm sitting there with my hazard lights on because it was in a, a, I guess you call it quarter set so um, I'm looking at the house and I noticed somebody peek out of the kitchen window and then they disappear and they peeked out the kitchen window and they disappear so they peeked and they looked for a while and then they disappear and I'm like you know what they're not they didn't respond to my text I am starting to drive off I did not um, I did not cancel the ride because if I cancel it I cancel at the very last moment if i have to so i drove up the street slowly and then i kept looking out my rear view mirror and all of a sudden there were three men on the uh in the front of the house and one was coming up the street following me with his hands thrown up in the air so i make a u-turn and i go back and uh he's on the uh on the driver's side talking talking to him through the window and I said are you waiting for an uber and he says yeah and um, I said is it for you no I, I said I said is someone waiting for uber he said yeah I said is it for you he says yes and then he went around and he went to get in the front the front seat the passenger seat and he said uh, I said well um and what is your name and so he gave me the correct name and i says okay i says i i slide the bar at the bottom to accept his uh to say that he's in my car and and to get the map or address to where i'm gonna take him well the man he took him a few seconds to open up the door and when he got in he had on no shoes his shirt was inside out his shirt was backwards he had on shorts so when he sat in the car and like I said I slid the bar and I said there's no address to where you're going and he says I said where are you going by this time I know that this man is drunk now it is still not even 7 30 at night and he is so very drunk i am like kind of scared that he may barf in my car so um evidently um he hadn't had enough to drink because i said 
Um, so where do you want to go? He looked, well, he never looked directly to me. He says, I want to go to a liquor store. I'm like, the liquor store? I says, okay, well, where's the liquor store? Because I don't know. I'm in a uh, part of town I don't know. And um, so he directs me to the liquor store. Turn right here, turn left there, turn right here, and there's the liquor store. I says, okay. So I pull him up to the liquor store. I said, do you want me to sit here and take you back? And he says, yes. So he went to get out the car and he's playing with the um, lock on the latch, uh, um, the handle to get out. And I says, no, it's the, the, this part of the handle to pull it open. So he opens the door and he steps out and uh, he closed the door. So he's stumbling, not stumbling, but he's not walking straight. It's like he's like ready to pass out. So there were other people pulling up to the liquor store <laughs> and he went to pull the door open. The man was so weak where he couldn't even open up the door to get in the liquor store. So someone came in behind him and pulled the door for him. So he let him in. So I watched that man go, I watched um, the man go in and the man go behind him. And then there was a, a lady who came up with a stroller. She went in the store and there was a man that parked on the street. He went in the store and then I had um, guys on the side of me uh, uh, that uh, I think two of those got out, two or three of them got out and went to the liquor store. There was a truck. Um, before the car came, there was a truck with a, uh, older man got out and all these people went into the liquor store after the man I took to the liquor store and they all purchased whatever they were going to purchase and they all left. Now I'm like, well, where's the man at? So I'm like, I am not about to get out this car to go into the liquor store to see if he was all right or he passed out or what so now all of these people that went into the store now we have more people that's uh coming and i say about maybe five more people went in i'm like you know what mm. he is taking too long i am not gonna go in that liquor store so i went on and i ended his trip well, when I ended his trip, that is what I'm going to get paid from whatever that was. That's my pay. Um, so as soon as I ended his trip, I started up the car and I was about to back out. The man was coming through the door, coming towards the car. He had a little... He had a little paper bag in his hand. So I'm like, dang it, I ended the trip. So now from this time on, I'm not getting paid. But me being kind, uh, uh, he got back in the car. So now um, when I uh, go out the driveway of the liquor store, I already know I came from back this way. But I'm not from the neighborhood, so I figured a man know where he lived. So he said, make a right. So I'm like, okay. So by the time I made a third turn and, and we were going down the street and it wasn't the street. I'm like, this is not the street. Um, and so I made a U-turn and so he said, oh, well, may and he said, oh, it's the next street over. I went through all that none of those streets now by this time because i i ended his ride i got another request so now i'm freaking out because this man is drunk in my car and he evidently don't know where he lived and i didn't have an address anymore so um i was getting worried and i told him i'm like okay um I was about to uh, go up another set of streets and, and all of a sudden I'm like smelling something kind of sweet. I looked over at him and I'm, he's drinking his liquor. 
I'm like, oh, no, you can't drink in here. And so he capped it up. He didn't say anything. Oh, and then I forgot to tell you guys. I told him to put on the seatbelt. He wouldn't put on the seatbelt. But anyway, let me get on with the story. So, the third time of our set, third set of streets we went up, we found his where he belongs. So I pulled up. I'm happy. I'm waiting for him to jump off the car, and he is still sitting in my car. Like my brain is going cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo because. I got people that's waiting for me to pick them up. That's because right now I'm not making no money with you, dude. Until I gotta go pick up these other people. So I looked over at him like, uh, you can get out. And he said, okay. And he screwed on his little bottle, a uh, little bottle of liquor, whatever he had. And he eat putting it down in his, sh in his pocket, in his uh, short pocket. And then he finally got out. So, um, also when I ended the trip, because I don't think it was, I don't think he was the one that requested the trip uh, to, to go to the liquor store. I think somebody else did it. So I think the other people were worried when I ended the trip and he wasn't home. So of course, everybody in the house was outside waiting and I just like flew him in, but he was taking forever to get out. It's like, I want to reach across, open the door and tell him to could you go because I got people that's waiting so um so when I uh, got to the other place it was just like right around the corner now if they were looking at their phone they will see I was going all different ways and not even coming towards them because I was probably like four minutes three minutes away from them but they said it, um when the other ones got in the car there was four guys that got in the car. They said, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. And I says, wait until you guys get in the car and I'm going to tell y'all the story. And when I started to tell them the story, I was trying to tell them about the man's shirt was inside out and backwards. And, and he said, uh, and that he was barefooted. And they were just laughing. And they said, oh, yeah, you know, guy back there, he barefooted because it was four of them. And they said, well, you just traded in one for four for four of us. That's just the same as him. But yes, it was like, oh, my gosh. Wow. And I was having all tonight. I was having trouble with my Google map. Um, I had to basically take the address off of the Uber map and put it, the address into the uh, Google Maps. So that is my short story for tonight my first uh uber life story and i hope you guys enjoy and if i could say i love you you can definitely love yourself bye